here. How we doing, people? My name is Mo, your friend of the neighborhood music head, and today I'm going to be talking about something that is kind of taboo in at least the music industry and amongst blogs, and that is fake streams. In this vid, I'm going to be breaking down different methods that artists pull in order to gain some boost in their streaming numbers, particularly by paying some money. Now, this is nowhere near a new practice in music when artists are paying in order to get record spins. This has been a very evident thing in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Some of you may know the term payola. Now, in especially radio, this is a term used for when a label or an artist approaches a DJ or radio station saying they're going to pay them a specific amount of money in order to play their songs regularly throughout their days. For example, if an artist is about to put out a new album, their label will likely approach a DJ and say, hey, we're going to give you a couple thousand dollars if during your shift at, say, two to six, you play this song like five times. Now, this method really did work because the artist will now be getting a whole lot of money from people purchasing the song after they've heard it on the radio. The label will be making a whole lot of money off the song and then the project that will come later on because they've now heard it on the radio. And DJs, they're going to be making money off of all the times the label is approaching them. It was a win-win for everybody, except the listeners. The problem, of course, is that it makes radio super inorganic when trying to listen to new music. You might have heard of the term radio programming, which is essentially like, you hear a song and you don't really like it, and you kind of hear it a couple dozen more times on the radio, and after a while you kind of enjoy the song now, or at least tolerate it. And that's all thanks to some DJ being paid to play it over and over again. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants to be kind of forced into listening to bad music. That's just not how it should work. So as this pertains to payola, labels just shouldn't be allowed to force a song down people's throats. It's kind of that simple. Plus, of course, this practice boosts songs into the Hot 100. And if there's only 100 slots available every week, that means a paid-for song is now entering a list that somebody else likely didn't have the economic capital to surpass. So now they're left off this list, and it matters for their career. It's ridiculous. Payola was eventually outlawed in 1960, but there's, of course, rumors that this practice is still going on to this day. Today, in 2020's music streaming landscape, we found a new version of Payola, which is paying for streams. While it doesn't have as catchy of a name as Payola, it's still just as grimy, if not worse. So there's two major ways artists can try to boost their streaming numbers, monetarily. One way is essentially paying your way onto a playlist. It's kind of like Payola, except on Apple Music or Spotify. And it's very much prohibited on these services, unless you get caught. For example, there was this site called Spotlister, where you go to this site, you pay maybe 2 to $3, and... You get added to this database where these Spotify playlisters and curators are potentially considering adding them to their popular playlists. So if you kind of won this lottery, so to speak, of them picking you, you're now added to a playlist that has a couple thousand followers and you can kind of jumpstart your streaming process. However, Spotify quickly found out about it and dealt with them with the swiftness. They banned them and their site was taken off the internet, things of that nature. There are rumors amongst label executives and creatives that this is a very active business going on in the shadows, where curators are essentially charging $200, anywhere up to $2,000 just to have a song added to a very popular playlist. Sadly, the return on investment for these managers who are, say, paying $1,000 to get their artist's song on a playlist is wildly lucrative. I mean, playlists are making up anywhere from a third to even half of most streams on these platforms. Everybody's trying to find new music, but they don't really know how to do it efficiently, so they just go to a simple playlist. And it is very convenient, I'll always advocate for that. But it's so easy for an artist to have their career jump-started by getting on the Rap Caviar playlist on Spotify, or Rap Life on Apple Music, or Thorough Hip Hop on Tidal that once you start at a lower tier playlist that only has a couple thousand followers, you can essentially work your way up that ladder. I also want to say that I'm in no way trying to advocate for people to try to pay thousands of dollars to get onto a playlist. I think it's very shameful, honestly, the idea that you think you have to pay money to get on in today's music industry. However, I'm just trying to tell you guys how it's working nowadays and people are giving it up this way. 
The other way that people are trying to boost their streaming numbers are by paying for bots to play their songs on repeat all day and night. J. Cole very eloquently said on 21 Savages a lot, saying, question, how many faking their streams, getting their plays from machines, I can see behind the smoke and mirrors niggas ain't really big as they seem. And he's right. There are artists and labels literally paying for machines to be streaming their songs on Spotify and YouTube just so that they can boost up numbers in that fashion. The term for that we now call streaming farms. I think even Schoolboy Q was trying to figure out what J. Cole was talking about on that track. Yeah, so J. Cole, what was the machine called that niggas is using for their fake stream? Because I want to borrow that motherfucker. I'm trying to borrow. Let me see something right quick. <laughs> you feel me? Was the money fake? Was the, when the nigga fake the stream, do the money come in fake too? Shit, because I'm trying to figure this shit out, man. This soccer practice shit is wearing my ass out. The way it works is a label will buy a ton of phones, hook them up to phone chargers and Wi-Fi, and have them sit there and play songs from a specific artist on repeat. So over time, the numbers will gradually go up because you're sitting there with several hundreds of phones just continuously playing songs. And it may sound crazy, but it's 100% a thing. I'll link a video down below and maybe even a screenshot on here showing you how ridiculous the setup can be, but it is very lucrative and can boost numbers dramatically. Variety Magazine reported that 3-4% to of all streams online, whether audio or video, were illegitimate. So, in an industry that made roughly $13 billion last year, that's roughly $300 million lost that should have gone to creatives. So it's a huge problem. One thing that I'm discovering now is that there's a new method for streaming farms that I'm just getting hip to because of what French Montana did recently. French put out the track Writing on the Wall back in September of 2019. Features Cardi B and Post Malone. I'll be honest, I kind of like the song. I mean, it's a it's very much mimicking what Unforgettable was with that like Afro beatsy pop but R&B vibe. But I kind of did enjoy it. Sadly, I was in the minority because there were a whole lot of people who didn't. It very much flopped. Now, I learned the rest of this through some Twitter user named Carlemagne. They essentially made this Twitter thread detailing how the song Writing on the Wall re-entered Spotify charts. Solely Spotify charts, for that matter. And in a dramatic fashion. They essentially break down how either French Montana or his label paid for some hacking company to hack into people's Spotify's and stream writing on the wall on repeat whenever they weren't using the app. So there were people who woke up in the morning, checked their Spotify, go to their recently played, and see that writing on the wall had been playing all night, and they don't even listen to French Montana. So the song gained a sudden spurt of traction, and it's being picked up in the Spotify algorithms, so it's getting a bunch of new streams. That's ridiculous, man. It's easily the lamest possible way to gain new streams. And it was later reported that 50 Cent might have been the one to purchase these streams for French so that he can get this current criticism that he's getting now. Just like how he bought all those front row tickets to some Ja Rule concert so that Ja Rule wouldn't have anyone in his front row. Like, that whole trolling thing, but even the idea of this practice existing is still wildly unsettling. The idea that somebody could hack into me in my account, invade my privacy, pretend to be me for somebody else's gain is just disgusting to me, man. I've seen some like potential solutions for these streaming farms or even paying for playlists, and they're all just kind of great in theory. I mean, telling the labels to police themselves and their employees is laughable. I mean, it's like giving a criminal a badge for crying out loud. And there is the idea of doing like streaming chart penalties. So the idea is like you have an artist who has four songs in the top 100 and three of them are very high but the fourth one isn't. So the idea is if they're paying for streaming farms to boost up that fourth song and they get found out for performing that action, all four songs would then fall off the charts. The idea of that is kind of cool but it would take so much like coordination and planning that it's just a hypothetical, like I said. The only solution that makes sense to me is for Apple Music and Tidal to finally release their streaming numbers. I mean, we found out that French Montana was doing this practice all because Spotify has their numbers released. 
So technically this could have been happening on Apple Music and Tidal as well, but we don't know that because both platforms keep all their analytics hidden. It's only really available to the artists. I'm hoping that they don't. I mean, obviously, however, it's very much a possibility. So for those of you watching this video, there's no real solution that I'm trying to advocate for right now. However, I'm just trying to familiarize you guys with the situation and just how labels and artists are giving it up in 2020. So thank you for watching this video. You guys are great. You are awesome. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like this video pretty please. <laughs> Check out my album of the year video that I did a couple weeks ago. Put a whole lot into that. It's long, but I'm proud of it. Yeah, thank you guys for making it to the end. And yeah, follow me on social medias and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out.